All right, it's five o'clock, so I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Here. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Whoa. Here. Okay, and up first we have the acceptance and oath of office. And I have them right here. Oh. I know. <laughs> Anybody else want to see it? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. What's your first name? Either way, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Position appointment. I emailed everybody the four names that were in, and I have them here. If somebody wants to refresh their memories or look over anything, please. It's a crazy day, and I get a whole lot of time to sit down. Anybody here of the four that would like to say anything or speak on behalf of yourself? Like just an introduction or something, or whatever. Or sure. why you're interested in being on the board, or? Yeah. Sure. Um, I'm Jody Webb. Um, I have two kiddos here, so they're both in high school this upcoming year. Um, being here, this is going on our sixth year. Being a part of the school board, I've been part of boards pretty much my whole career since I was 18, um, either recreationally or local, state, and national. Um, I have an interest because I like to be a part of the process when it comes to my children's education. I believe highly about parent voice and parent participation and family engagement. So I would say that's my highlight. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm Sarah Panetta. Um, I also have two kiddos. Um, my oldest is starting first grade. Um, and then I also have a baby. Um, we have planted our roots here in Surrey, so we are here for the long haul. Um, I also like to be involved in the future of my children. I just want to make the best possible school for them and the rest. I mean, we have a lot of friends, kids too, that I consider my own. And, um, just want to be in the process and make a good school for them. Thank you. Can I use Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I gotta sell myself. Uh, Ron Averly, grew up here, graduated here, have had seven kids graduate here, have one more left. Um, over the years I've been on the school board, 
I was on nine years prior, five years this time. Uh, some of the things I've done for the school, um, this past year I got one of our contractors, CTI, to put in a drainage pipe <clears throat> in the football field that would cost about $6,000. They donated that to the school. Prior to that, <clears throat> I had them put in a sewer line and water line from the concessions. When that was built, each of those was over 10,000. They donated that to the school. Um, I run a girls tournament here at the school that brings in about $6,000 to the girls basketball program each year. Uh, recently, with the help of parents, we got a shooting gun donated to the school. That was a $6,000 thing. Um, <clears throat> I run the summer skills camp, which I donate my time any money that the kids do pay goes into the basketball fund. I don't keep any of that. Um, I donate bus driving time when I drive for volleyball and the short trips I do for basketball, I donate my time for that also. So, um, I guess that's about it. It's a quick resume around, thank you. <clears throat> um, so how do we wanna proceed? Take a ballot, or it would probably be easier to really. Call for a motion first. Oh, motion? <laughs> okay. And then you can vote by ballot if you'd like. That's what we're doing. Are we still discussing this, or, when, or do we discuss this when we just vote? Well, we can discuss it if you'd like. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're fortunate uh, to have three people that are so involved uh, come forward and, and want to serve. So I, I think we're going to be in a good position no matter what happens, which is a good, good position to be in. Um, I've worked with Ron over the last year and a half. has been uh, really helpful trying to get my mind wrapped around the school board business here. And we have the benefit of having two of the candidates here today actually ran in the election, too, so we can see how voters uh, pick and chose what they wanted. So with, with that in mind, uh, everybody seems impeccably qualified but, um, from my support on uh, Ron. He's got a lot of experience and um, was almost elected. So uh, we'll do that route. Right. Well yeah, nobody else wants to talk to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm I guess uh, I would like to say after the election results that um, maybe the people of Surrey wanted to see a little change. Um, I do give kudos to Sarah for uh, running, getting your name on the ballot. So I would like to make a motion to appoint Sarah Vanetta to the board.
Over here, how about you guys? I, I'm not again. I support Ron's uh, candidacy to be appointed here, just with his level of experience. And while voters did make uh, choices that they, um, it was it was a narrow choice. So I think it, we have a clear understanding from the community that uh, Ron's the guy that they would like to have up here, given the choice and outside of a special election. But, that's just where we're at. You know, we're, we'd be losing a lot of corporate knowledge by losing Ron, and he's willing to come back. So that would be the obvious choice. Steph, how many years have you been on that school board? Oh gosh, I'm not sure. Maybe seven or eight? The longest of anybody else. Nicole? Oh, this is my fourth year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any further discussion? I don't think so. Do you want to cast another should, should we see what the like the policy says? I mean, maybe there's something that directs us and what we're supposed to do. Do we have a policy book? There is. There is. <clears throat> Don't tell me where you're going to flip a coin. No, if it ends up in a, <clears throat> ends up in a tie, and you can't decide it actually goes to a special election. states. In the event of a tie, the board will recast their votes through signed ballots, voting only on the candidates who were tied. Should a statement stalemate exist after the board has voted three times, the board will table the appointment process until the next regular or special meeting called for that purpose. Should a stalemate exist within 60 days, the board shall initiate the proceedings for holding a special election to fill the board vacancy. So, Another vote? Uh, yeah, it seems like we have to do at least two more. Sign. <clears throat> sign? Yeah, I guess, yeah, sign. Uh, what? Oh. I'm sorry. We just have to sign it. It says that it's, they have to be signed oh, ballots. Okay. All three times? Or just? I think after the first day. After the first day. Oh, after the first day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. Thank you. There's a half-use steno pad here for anybody in this Oh, Mrs. Hanson made those. She's. I told her to tell her what it's small. Oh, nobody told me the size. She's going to write a name. Give me specific directions. We didn't have any templates. I'm sorry.
with you after the board meeting and getting the paperwork. Oh, she can see that the next board meeting. Actually, Brad, where? Because I think you need it. I looked, sorry, sorry, Sean. I looked at the North Dakota Extension Code, and technically, I believe if she um, completes her oath of office, that she can be appointed immediately. But it's, I mean, I'm new too, so whatever I want to do. What does our policy say? I mean, if it, that's totally fine with me as long as our policy says that. I thought our policy said, like our school policy said it was the next board meeting. But let's read, I think it's right here. Commencement of duty. The newly appointed elected board member shall be seated at the next meeting of the board following his or her appointment election. The appointed elected board member shall execute the oath of office in accordance with the deadline in law. A board member thus appointed elected shall serve until the next regular election of the board and until a successor is elected and qualified. Um, would this be the next regular, I mean, after after this? We're only having oh, one that's meeting. right, we're only having one. So would this count then, do you know, Dave, as a regular? This is a regular board meeting. No, it's not. Well, it was our regular, regular monthly schedule. This is well, the annual meeting of the regular monthly meeting. It says seated at the next meeting, right? Right. It doesn't even say regular. So right. this meeting. Following um, his or her appointment or election. Oh, why did I? Where did I? Oh, because oh, it doesn't say regular meeting. You're right. No, just at the next meeting of the board following his or her election. So if this was if we were doing that special meeting, then I think she could have been. Oh, okay. I don't know, but this is if we're doing one meeting. The Maybe next meeting is August 11th. August the next 11th. regular meeting is August 11th. Okay. We'll just go with that then. All right, so August 11th then will be our next regular board meeting and we'll have you um, come and sign your oath of office if you haven't already. Okay. okay. All right, and the next thing on the agenda is 
electing a president. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll nominate Steph Munoz to be president. Denied. <laughs> I will nominate uh, Nicole Wall as president. Thank you. Can I nominate myself or is that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting. <laughs> I'd like to nominate myself uh, as a uh, former president as well. All right, well, we have uh, three votes, um, three different people. So, another ballot. Yeah, I think that's probably All right, we're in the paper now. <laughs> well, I think you have to accept the nomination. If you're not willing to serve, then we can't nominate you. Um, if you're going to turn it down. <laughs> I'm going to turn it down. <laughs> so is it just Nicole and Daniel? Yes. nominations for the vice president.
motion to accept First International Bank as our official depository. Second. All in favor? Oh, sorry, I don't do that part, do I? No. Do that. <laughs> John? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. Okay, so now we need to designate the official newspaper. I will make a motion to um, make our, designate our official newspaper as the Minot Daily News. I'll second. Yes. Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Well, Yes. Okay, so now we need to designate uh, an authorized representative for items 1 through 10. Um, in the past, I believe we've always designated, do we have to do these separately? No. Okay. I believe we've always designated the superintendent to um, be the authorized representative for all of these. Is there any dis anyone want to have any discussion about changing that or making a motion otherwise or making that motion? I'll make a motion to designate authorized representative for items 1 through 10. I'll second it. Oh. Oh. oh, sorry, Dave Gurdy. <laughs> <laughs> to have a K-12 email address, something that could be publicly, publicly published on the website and would give you guys a means of direct communication with your constituents. Upon termination of your position, the email address would immediately go away too. So you deal with it while you have it. Once you're done with it, you don't have to deal with it anymore. He has one coming his way and I would make the offer to any and all board members. It is one more email address to check but it also is very stable and you don't have problems with normally getting rejection from Gmails and stuff like that. And then you don't have to share your personal one with the community. So once your time is done, you walk away from it. I would oh, like that. Done. It just takes a simple form I'll grab at the end of this meeting, first name, last name, city of birth, and you can all have one. I'll publish them on the website. Have one, Sean? You is had a Gmail back in the day when we used to do the Chromebooks, okay. so no. I would like one too, I think yeah. that's awesome. Okay. Thank Sarah? Yes. Sarah? Probably Sarah. Yes? Yes. Okay. Can I ask a question on that? Mm -hmm. Is there a designated one for like the board, like in case a parent wanted to connect with the board directly, would you have like a board at? Or would it be? It'd be their individual asset? names. Yeah. yeah. So that would be posted then on the website for parent communication. Correct. Right underneath their name. Thank you, Sean. Okay, are there any other addition? Okay, so that was the only faculty or employee? No students are here. Um, then we, I didn't ask if there are any additions or corrections to the agenda. Are there any additions or corrections? I'll just say that when we, um, Mr. Burning and I redid the agenda, I moved up the appointment of the vacant board position and I failed to take it off on their new business. So I scrolled oh. off on there, but it was already on the agenda. So just letting you, just letting you know. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Mm -hmm. I, if I can add an email that I received, um, basically a letter of concern. What should we put that on here? 
under new business? Yeah, that would be fine. to approve the June 9th regular meeting minutes? I'll second it. <clears throat> Johns? Um, can I abstain just because I wasn't here for those meetings? Abstain. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wolf? Yes. student game admission. Um, I did send you sports cost in a spreadsheet just to let you know how much our sporting events cost. Um, in the last six years, I do believe, we have not charged the students to get in the games that are free. I just want your opinions. Um, <clears throat> I did come up with the number saying that we're losing out for about $10,000 a year when we don't, and that's without student activity passes, because that'd be a little bit cheaper for them to get. But I just want to know what your thoughts are. I know when we were doing the budget um, the last few days, I thought everything was okay until the computer didn't put the cash option to try to shave $160,000 of the budget today, and that's a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> what do you mean, what's cash option? What are you talking well, about? Well, for... Um, the teacher's cash option, it wasn't oh. into the budget, so that dropped down, so I had to, gotcha. I had to look at $160,000 to shave on the budget that I thought, hey, it was looking pretty good. And all of a sudden, I have to shave that much money. Um, every little bit does count because sports are expensive. You know, it's expensive to, to run or sporting events, you know, uniforms, uh, equipment, game officials are really expensive and seems like it's going up every other year. But I just want to know what your thoughts are. Like I said, the last six years we did not charge our students. But um, well, I'll just say my piece on that. You know, I think if I remember correctly, we kind of went that route because we wanted to get more support from our students. Um, however, with that said, I I don't know. I have no proof. I guess that. Um, that has helped. I, I personally think, I know my kids at least, would probably still attend this, the sporting events, even if they had to pay to get in. So. And we were thinking about you know, activity pass for a student, $50, and we have you know 30 home games, that's less than $2 a game for them. You know, I, it's, like I said, it's, it's a great thing to have our students at our ball games. Um, most schools around here do charge. I just want to know your thoughts or if we should start charging them. I, I don't have a problem with it as long as it's reasonable. It's not prohibitive uh, for them to go. Uh, I remember paying two bucks to go to the English school. We're, so. Yeah. Um, student, student fees is um, $4 for a game that night if, unless you get that activity pass. It's $50. Well, and I know we've also run into the problem, too, with co-oping, and maybe not everybody who is working the gate knows which student is from Surrey or isn't from Surrey, and I know that's kind of posed a little bit of a, a problem, but 
um, you know, I, I would be in favor of charging admission again for students. Before we, we only did it before, because I do remember that time when it was charged, but I was just barely starting to attend events. My kids were really young. So um, do you know, like, were we able to break even at that time or were we still losing? How much is this really going to make us break even or is this just- Oh, I don't think it'll ever break even, but it will help. Yeah. I think it's a very good, it was a very good practice to have to like encourage them to come for free. But um, like Steph said, I would be maybe not 50, maybe $25 for the year, something a little closer to zero. I agree. I think $50 is too much. I think there's not that many students that are going to attend every home event. For every and sport, right? For every sport. Yeah. And so, if you have a brother that plays basketball and you want to go to all the basketball games, $50 might be a lot to go to every basketball game. Do we want to look at per sport activity fee or the whole? Maybe, yeah. what, Whatever you guys think. I'm just throwing some. Well, I'm not trying to it. complicate it. I just think, right. like Jenny's right, just make it a lesser price than $50. I think $50 might be cost prohibitive for some families, especially if you have multiple children. I mean, I guess it's not something we have to decide right now either. I mean, we can certainly think about it and everybody can maybe come up with some ideas and, you know, maybe we offer two different packages, maybe per sport or you know, a whole activity pass. Yeah, Sean. Okay. Can I make a comment on this? Yeah. I worked a lot of um, game duties and the concessions and stuff, and I think our there were more kids at the games when, when it became free. But I don't think a whole lot of them were always watching the game. So I would really like, I, I think we should go back to charging just as a way so that the people who do attend are there to watch and to cheer on the team, not be running around and leaving mom and dad thinking that they're at the game. So I feel like a nominal charge would be, at least we get the people there who want to participate as as a spectator, which is a, you're participating in the game from your own way. That's what I'd like to see. I guess another option would be, like you said, making it sports orientated. So like $10 for a football pass or um, something closer to that. But would that make more work for you then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a nice part if you try like Yeah. Maybe for that. Yeah, like, that like, a different <laughs> color. <laughs> I would also like your thoughts about the in-town bus route. I know last year we didn't have it. Um, it ran really smooth. We had students out of here after school in 10 minutes, whereas before, if we would run a bus route, some of those students were here 10 to 4. So they were in our building a long, long time. 
Um, along with that, we do not get reimbursed for in-town busing. So that's a huge expense for our school. And I was talking earlier that we have three buses down right now. We have bus six, that's not working, bus three, and bus five. <clears throat> Excuse me, bus five is gonna take about $5,000, $6,000 just to see what's going on, repair some transmission and oil leaks. And so I'm not sure if we really want to fix that. So I think it's the 1986 bus. That's a lot of money to put into a bus that might not be around too much longer. So um, we really need to upgrade our buses. And I just want to know what your, your thoughts. We did start an after school program this year, tried to help uh, the, the patrons out with um, having the students after school, picking them up later. But um, I had a few parents call and ask if we were going to have it. I said I was going to bring it up to the board meeting, so that's what I'm doing. There's a lot of things involved. Like I said, um, we do not get reimbursed for our in-town route. And like I said, I had to shave $160,000 off the budget today, so it was, wasn't looking good. What about um, before school? That's, I love the after school, but I'm concerned about parents before school. Even 745, we know we did 745 last year. I think that was still you know, really pushing it for some parents. You know, most people have to be to work in mind up by eight, which I know that's not our, our job is to to create that, but if we're taking that away, if someone moved to Surrey with that idea that mm -hmm. their kids be picked up by 7.30. Are you thinking that if we somehow come up with a plan that open up a little bit earlier, are you thinking, so we wouldn't have to run the route? Or- I think that would make it easier try, for try parents. To, try to mm -hmm. come up with an idea with that. Yeah, I think money would be better, but <clears throat> it just fiscally it doesn't make sense to keep dumping money into an almost forty-year-old truck. Um, and somehow everybody figured it out in town this year. I know it was a hardship, but at this point, I don't think we have the money to just throw good money after bad trying to fix it. I think that's pretty. Good. So. As much as I would love to um, offer a bus route for the in-town uh, students. I mean, financially, I just, I don't think it's a wise decision. I think especially if we're gonna have the after school program, um, and even if we opened the door, you know, five minutes earlier, say 7.40, I think that would, that would help too, but I just, I can't agree with starting that bus route up again. Was there any backlash last year when it was not ran? No, um, there wasn't because of COVID. There was reasons why, and, okay. and they were just asking if we we're gonna run it again this year. Um, so the, there's a few that the hardship, just like I said, maybe dropping them off a little bit earlier. And then with the after school program, I think that's gonna benefit a lot of families. And I, I do have a plan to hopefully in the next few years to get our buses replaced and better, better equipped and so. Would a survey going out to the parents be a good idea? Sure. I don't know, has well, that worked in the have, past? You can never have not enough community input, that'd be fine. I mean, has that worked in the past? No. No. <laughs> well, and I don't know at this point, we have enough time. We don't meet until August. I mean, I mean five days before school starts. Yeah, I think we need to just make the choice now, uh, make that decision. Could we limit it just to winter months? Well, we're still gonna have to face that bus if we do that. So. I just, I honestly think between the the staff, the cleaning of the buses with, I'm sure we still have to follow COVID guidelines for that. Um, the money that we would need to put into the buses and the, like I said, the staffing um, and diesel or gas, whichever they take. Um, I, I'm just really not in favor of it. I mean, not for our school at this time. Not with our current situation. Do I have a motion either way? I will make a motion to continue not having an in-town bus route. Any second? I'll second. 
Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. And that's all I have right now. I'm talking business. Thank you. Tyler? Um, does anybody have any questions on the financial statements? I did send out a check register because um, we did pay the board bills in June. And then um, on June 30th, we always try to pay um, additional things that come in so that we can get them expensed out in that you know, fiscal year. Um, so I did send you both of those check registers and I don't know if anybody has any questions. Just, I know you're looking at the auditors. Are the auditors coming this summer? Um, usually in November. Okay, I haven't like, gotten the schedule yet. You'll work on that health insurance payable, right? Mm -hmm. Does he does? Yep. Yep. I didn't have any questions. Well, there are no bills to pay, so I don't know if you want to make a motion to approve the financial statements as they are. Or anybody have any questions about anything? No, I don't. I'll make a motion to approve the financials. I'll second. Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. And then, oh, would you like me to wait on the tuition agreements until the policy is discussed? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Please. That's all I have. Okay. Ms. Hampton? All right, I got a couple things here for you. Um, the first one, we hired or would like to hire a new um, title teacher, Leah Sheridan. You have her present here, there in front of you. Um, Yesterday balanced. Can we afford this position? That anymore? was included. She's included. Yeah, but yeah. you just said it just changed. Yep. So now can we afford this? Yes. It, yes, I made it work. Oh, it still works. Yeah. Where did it come from? Well, I took. I wanted to make two payments on the loan, mm -hmm. so that was seventy thousand dollars, and then um, we have two grants that are coming that are forty thousand dollars each that um, we didn't have in the revenue, and then I took. Um, some cleaning supplies off because we're going to get some back from Esser and took off repairs and maintenance. We had way too much money in there that we didn't do. So that's how I shaved it. Okay, so if you included some of the Esser stuff and really this is only funded for one year? No, I, I'll be okay. Because I, I padded those so I'd make sure that we'd be okay. From, yes, I padded those souls to make sure that we'd be okay for more than one year. That's correct. Okay. Because I thought that we had all this money. And so that's why I padded all this other stuff, thinking, hey, we're sitting pretty good. And then when I had to cut that, I just had to make sure I didn't pad. And okay, I see. And have we already offered her the position? That's correct. Okay. So I have a motion for... To accept the, I will make a motion to accept the hiring of special education teacher Leah title. Sheridan. Title. Or title, sorry. I was looking at her resume. Mm. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. Okay, the second thing I have, and I had given you some information, but I got a little bit more on our monitoring um, report from um, Cognia. So I did send that out to you guys today. Um, on June 16th, they emailed me. We were given a five-year accreditation. Um, they said in another five, six weeks from there, we should get a certificate mailed out. So I'll have something to show you guys then. And then they'll have some things we can put out on the website for parents as well. So. Um, in the report, it goes through, you know, what they looked at, what they talked about, and it gives us 
kind of what her thing of what we've done so far and then what she wants us to continue to work on. So it was a good visit. It was um, interesting during COVID, of course, but it was good. Yeah, I don't think I got that email. Did you guys? Yeah. You did? Yeah. It's like 15 p.m. Oh, I didn't see it. At 10 o'clock this no, morning. Oh, no. No, it was. I just didn't see it for the Bad Stead report. Yeah. Oh, no, that wasn't it either. I got a different email from you. Well, I sent out about 100 today. <laughs> it looks like another 100 people sent me other emails, too. It felt like that. It was at 1017, if that helps you to find it. All right. I didn't get it either. I didn't get it. Oh, I see. The forward? Maybe it's because it's a forward. Yes, I forwarded it from Mrs. Hansen. Oh, from you. Okay, I was looking for her. What do we? What are, do we need to do? Or is this just information for? No, us? it's just information. Okay. We're at with it right now. <clears throat> and the last thing I have, um, Mr. Hoffer is going to talk a little bit more on the handbook changes, but. Um, you have a contract in front of you from Corp Discovery. Um, so just a little quick rundown that it's things we get from a consortium that we can use in the shop or in classrooms. I know Mrs. Thompson uses the, um, the biochemistry equipment. There's a lot of things we get for the shop, like a plasma cutter, a printer, those kind of things. We, we get it through this consortium. There's five schools in there that I'm not sure. Um, it's now expanded, so there's like uh, 22 schools. Well, there it is. Okay, yeah, okay. They I was thinking of the area ones, I guess. I forget about nine that. Nine or something last year. Okay, yeah. There's an agreement, but it doesn't cost the school any money this year. Yeah. Awesome. Does that change, though? Does the cost price change over time? Well, they did have a little thing at the end of the email saying, you know, with costs of everything going up like they are, there might be down the road some future costs, but as of right now, it's zero. Because, um, Twyla, say if I'm saying this right, because we were in a different consortium before right, that paired up with these guys, and they just put that money towards that, so it pays for what Surrey, Kenmare, and Berthold are, are paid on that, so, so it's zero right now. Can you pass that down? Yeah, they didn't have it either. Yeah. Yeah. But we aren't tied to anything past this, right? Just the two years for now that are zero. I'm all for anything that's free. Mm -hmm. that's and they also provide training for all of their new equipment and stuff, so we can attend um, just classes that can tell you how to use it. You're not just dumped with this new technology that you don't to use. Can we get a motion to accept their that contract? Court of Discovery? I'll make a motion to approve the approve and accept the Court of Discovery Agreement. I'll second. Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Walt? Yes. Um, then put the left assignment. I'll report to the left assignment. Yes, I'm up next. So what I was thinking we would do um, is I gave everybody a new copy. I got all the corrections, from, uh, most of the corrections. It's never all the corrections. But there was a weird setting going on in a Word document, and Mr. Gordon helped me fix that today. So thank you. Um, so I thought I'd just touch over a couple of highlights in here, and if there's any other questions, I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Does that sound OK? Perfect. All right. First page, I guess we can turn to is page four, which is the absence policy. And just to remind everything, everybody, everything that's in red, we're wanting to remove, and everything in green, we want to bring in. What's the yellow? The, Probably where they made the changes. The yellow, like the like the uh, the bolded heading, I just was like, this is a section I need to work on. That was kind of for my purposes. Oh. The okay. other yellow stuff, some of that was for Polly to look at. Oh, okay. So I just kind of helping myself take notes, but I took that out. I, now all that stuff's unhighlighted right now. So um, we did get a grant this year. I'm trying to remember the name of that grant. Paul, I just wrote. 
No, it wasn't CTE, but that's why we went with a six days absence policy. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, ready. 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 Readiness. Yeah, choice ready. Okay, and we got a $30,000 grant, and then that's uh, one of the criteria for kids to get that $6,000 scholarship to go to college. And so we're trying to meet that, so that's why we set the six days. The other thing that's going to help that out is we have excused absences now. So if a kid has a medical appointment, that doesn't count against that absence count. They have a chiropractor appointment, a family emergency, a funeral. They're all listed here. So I think that's a very doable number. That's six per quarter, or semester, I should say. Uh, we're aiming for three a quarter, but we're not going to count it by quarter, just the semester. And this is in order to get that grant? Yes. Okay. So, um, and then... What did you say about with going to college, though? I was confused on that. There's a $6,000 scholarship. North Dakota. North Dakota scholarship that's available to every high school kid in the state. If they take either CTE classes or it's by grade. It's by, it's, yeah, grade. And so if they qualify for that, they would get that $6,000. Well, they're adding some check marks in there. And choice ready is one of the check marks. So you have to have good attendance. And that and you get that check mark. Um, and then you have to have certain check marks in order to get that scholarship. So um, and then I guess we'll, I think it was one of the changes that you mentioned was um, students that are involved, I guess that's on page five, Nicole had you pointed that out. I did change that. Oh. will be considered excused, and then the red part will be deleted or removed. Um, page six, there's a couple changes. Um, are you going to run to another policy? Are you still on attendance? Uh, nope, I just jumped to another policy. I just wanted to ask if the board wants to approve them by category, or if you want to approve everything at the end. Yes. I think at the end. This yeah, I think change. you can probably do it at the end. Can you make comments along the way, or is yes. it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, so for the excused absences, I, 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 at some point that we're going to run into where a parent thinks a kid shouldn't be in school for one reason or another. I know my kids dealt with some things this past year and just woke up not capable of going to school. Time, so I kept them home. Um, under this, that would be a family emergency or a medical appointment, and I have no documentation other than me saying I got a crying twelve-year-old that can't get out of bed. So. You know, but it, don't you have that thing in there about the principal and the administrator? Does that mean in case by case basis? Yeah, it, it can it can be you know. So would that be a family emergency? That's yeah. what I would think. And yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's what I would call it is a family emergency. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, but it says documentation maybe. Maybe yeah, maybe required. Yeah, so I know people might be abusing that too. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Um, all right, activity eligibility on page six. Uh, the big change, when we did this, we met with, I had a meeting, and I said, oh, a bunch of teachers, you know, I invited all high school teachers. And I thought I'd get a couple, you know, it's summertime, everybody's on going. I had five or six in attendance and another seven or eight online. So everybody was committed to, you know, wanting to get their voice heard. And it was pretty unanimous on the activity thing. Right now, we allow kids to fail one class and still play sports. Um, they would like to change that to no classes. So they must pass all classes. And I personally think that's a good thing. So. Um, I don't agree with that. I think that some, some kids are better in some classes than others. Um, I, I just, I, I think that's really gonna hurt our sports program. I really do. I mean, I, I, I'm all for in not being eligible to play sports, but to say you can't have even one failing class, um, especially when grades aren't only updated, what, once a week? No, our grades are updated whenever teachers put in grades. It's checked once a week. So some schools actually check two, every two weeks, every four weeks. Yeah. So I think that's... Two, and that's hard. two things I'll add to that is when we met and we did talk about that very thing is making sure we get enough grades in that the kids have a chance to bring their grade up because I know that's kind of been an issue in some of the classes before that get them have the grades first of all but then get them documented in power school. Um, the other thing and we'll come to that a little bit later but we are 
working into a, an intervention time during the day. So when a kid gets down to a D, he's in intervention time. So we're gonna try and keep him from getting those Fs in the first place. So just a couple things I throw in there. I, I'm still not, I mean, what are we going to, to me, I feel like when maybe all a child has is a sport to look forward to and we take that away from them all because they're failing one class, what are we gonna do for the other students who aren't failing or who are also failing classes? Just because they're in sports, we're gonna punish them? Absolutely, I absolutely agree with Steph. I just, I, I, again, I'm all about not being eligible, but just because somebody is failing one class, I can't agree with that, I'm sorry. Like I said, maybe one child is A plus in math, but history is not their strong suit and they're failing. Um, I, I don't think we should punish them by saying, well, yeah, you are not doing very good in social studies. Even if they're trying their little heart out, you can't play your basketball game or you can't play your football game. Um, I think to me that's discouraging to take that away from them. Well, the other thing we've seen is kids go, well, I, I get one free one. I don't have to try in this class. And that's the other side of that. Okay, so what are you going to do with the students failing that are not in sports? Well, we, we do what we can. We try to give them some intervention time. We work with them. I mean, no, but I mean, what are you going to take away from them? That's not much I can take away, but they're not student athletes. They're, you know what I mean? They're North Dakota High School activities. They have guidelines for us. We have student athletes. If so the kid who doesn't play high school sports gets caught drinking, I can't take anything away from them. Well, but, but right? You're, you're right, but that's right. something illegal. We're not talking law here. Well, I guess I look at it from the standpoint that coming to school is, is their job. I mean, that's the, their main goal here. And playing sports is a, a privilege for that. And this coming from, I mean, my, my kids have struggles that they're trying to pass classes and stuff like that. And just my my dad law is your family you're not going to go <laughs> right now because that's their job is to do that and do that. Once they master that or at least get by on that and they can go do the other stuff. So, and just growing up, if you were failing on class where I'm from, that was, you were ineligible for anything. So it's not a new concept to me. Um, and I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. <clears throat> But just taking that point and rolling it into what Steph is trying to say is, I mean, that is something that the parents should be more in charge of, instead of the school punishing. I don't think it's really punishing the student for not passing. It's not rewarding them while they're failing. Mm -hmm. So I guess just looking at it from a different perspective, that their job is school. And then if they do that well enough, then they can be rewarded with sports. And, and I don't and disagree with that. What I'm saying, though, is, to not to to not let them play because they're failing one class, maybe by one percentage. I just I think it's really discouraging that we would take that away from them, especially if that is their livelihood. That's the only thing they have to look forward to, and then to take it away from them. I just don't know how. I mean, I really don't know. Is it is it really like if someone really tries their hardest and they. Is it really that hard to get a D? Like, if someone really tries their hardest, you know, like, I, I really don't know. I will speak to that because I have an older son who had a traumatic brain injury and struggled in school. No matter how hard he tried, he struggled. But he played football and he tried. He didn't have the best grades. And it's embarrassing and it's sad when we take that away from them. Again, I don't disagree with ineligibility. I just would still like to see us leave that policy the way it is. One class. Okay. Um, I think that what I would really like in, on this whole thing is to get some, some parent and teacher input before we pass any or all of these. I'd really like to hear what the people who are this is really going to affect have to say especially about things like this things where i specifically have i feel like i don't have a dog in this fight and i might except for the people i'm fighting for i'm not sure i'm not sure what they think or what i you know so 
I don't think we want to open up discussion right now, but um, I think we do want to open it up at some point. That's my thoughts. Okay. Does anyone else? No, I would agree with that. Okay. Shall we move on? We'll come back to this. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Um, attendance guidelines. Um, Where's that? That's actually just down on page six also. And juniors and seniors, for those of you who don't know, are allowed to leave if they don't have a seventh out. Okay, and so one of the things we'd like to see changed is juniors and seniors who are getting a D or lower, they'd be required to stay. Fine, maybe they can work with that teacher that they're struggling in that class. It gives them something. Just kind of allows us to have some extra time and get some extra time with those students. I mean, it's, it's a privilege to leave that early. I, I mean, guess it my, shouldn't be. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask. Um, I mean, that I do not think that is a terrible idea at all. I guess my question for you is, do we have, or should, uh, let me reword this. Have we thought about designated teachers to help with these students? Because I'm just wondering, like, how many teachers are actually available that last hour if they like if somebody's struggling in math and that's where we're gonna we're gonna keep them after that seventh hour instead of letting them leave because they need help with math. Like are we gonna have somebody available, like math teacher, somebody who understands math? I can't guarantee like that that's gonna be their off hour. But most of the time if you go sit in that classroom, I know Ms. McDermott's been great. Come sit in the back of my class and Oh, okay. you know, I if, didn't if know you have questions, was, come on in. I didn't know. know that that was so, something that the school did. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know of a teacher in this building that doesn't open their door at any time. Like, even if they're in class? Well, if, well, depending on what's going on. If they're, the lights are off, they're watching a video that day, it's probably not a great day for that kid to work in the back. But it's before and after school. Come on in, Mom. I mean, that's not seven hours. No, hour. but that's not seven so, hours. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Like, so, they're okay with people coming in during their regular classroom time? and That's something we're going to have to deal with. Every teacher's a little different, but they can, they can, I can find room in Mrs. Hansen's office, my office. But we'll I mean, get they get the help that they need, is my question. That's just something would, we're gonna have to I, deal with and kind of take us, I mean, we're a small school. I mean, our hands are somewhat tied. I know, so. but I don't want them sitting there on their phone either. Oh, they won't be on their phone. Mm -hmm. But, I'll but we want them. that, we want, I mean, we have some, we have a great piece of candy hanging out there. You get to leave for seven thousand. And if you want to leave, make sure you have all good grades. I mean, it's a great, I mean, the kids look forward. Right, and I just disagree that. with this. I guess I would just like to know and ensure that there's going to be a benefit to them staying. Like, I don't want them sitting there doing nothing, staring at the wall, counting tiles on their phone. I, I mean, I want to make sure that they're going to get help. Yeah, I would like I would like to know what the plan is. Absolutely. To make sure that that is an intervention period also. I think it's a great idea. And not so much as a carrot, but as a way to reach those students that are struggling. And I, you know, I'm excited that we were able to offer that. I just want to know what the plan is, too. I think that's a great idea. When we visited with the teachers, actually, I should have the schedule with you, but we have quite a few teachers that have that last hour of their prep period. And when they visited, they talked about doing maybe some rotating. And a couple of them did say, you know, I most of them don't teach the entire 45 minutes. There's work time. So they said, you know, kids could come in and be working with the other kids while they're working with them. So. I think it's a real feasible way to do it. We haven't got it mapped out in stone, but I think we do have, well, the teachers are the one that brought it up. So they, they want to be able to have that time in the kids. Again, um, it's not that I disagree with it by any means. I, I just want to make sure it's productive because we do have kids, especially because these are juniors and seniors, who have other commitments. They have jobs. Um, maybe they have a, a game to go to, um, and if they have a D, do they get to go to the game? Do they have to stay back? I don't know. Um, do they have to call work and say, hey, I have a D in school, I'm not going to be able to get there at 3 o'clock? <coughs> I mean, are those things that you guys have thought about? As far as your work schedule, not really. I mean, that's not our, that's an after-school commitment for them. That's not our problem. Well, but, As right. far as the games, they would, we're not going to hold them back. The games are not eligible. So they're going to, they would get to go to the game. That would be an excuse to have some. So. Well, again, I think we're going to get lots of input and thoughts on this. So let's move to the next one. Okay. Uh, page number eight. So, and this is under the bullying section. And basically all we mentioned here was 
the new Stop It App program that we have. And if you're not familiar with it, it's, a, it's available on our website and it's also an app you can download on your phone. Pretty cool tool. There's some schools that have had uh, major catastrophes diverted because someone stood up, reported that, and they stopped the catastrophe. How much um, is that costing us? Uh, none. But it's, it's a, going to in the future, right? I think that's three or five years. I'm trying to remember. It's free for I think it's five years. Um, I it's only free for it. so, so okay, great. So that's all that one is. Number eight. So page eight. And page eleven. So we have card playing on here. And it says it's against the rules. And nobody can figure out why. I think if kid wanted to have a little free time and said, Can I play spades back here with my friend? We'd probably go. Yeah, that would be your homework. That'd be great. You're actually communicating. So I think we just want to get that written. Um, page 12. Uh, disruptive classroom behavior, um, also known as pink slips. Uh, we're just kind of changing the process a little bit. Um, kind of something that just needs to be updated a little bit. So anybody has any questions on that? The teachers thought this was okay? What's that? The teachers thought this was okay? Yes. What about, and then I think we missed the detention that was above that. Well, the, I think that's what he's removing and putting the green in the place of it. Oh, oh I think he's talking about detention. Oh, yes, and then detention's above that, I guess. Um, looking at doing a lunchroom detention. Um, sorry, thank you. And uh, just something different, um, something that's kind of a deterrent. What we're looking at doing this year for cell phones is they're going to get to use them in the multi-purpose room for lunch and the wall hug gym, like after lunch to have some free time and they can hopefully some shoot some baskets and things like that. So they'll, that that would be their, their cell phone time. And so kind of an extra deterrent if you get in trouble, you now you have lunch detention, you don't get to use your phone. So hoping that'll work, something, something a little different. Um, And that is optional, right? That's at the discretion, or? Yep, yeah, and then we're looking at having just the dean of students or the principal assign that much attention. Like a regular Mrs. Ballmer has a problem with a student, that's on her, she'll do her morning or evening detention, whatever she'd like to do with her room. Okay. So. Uh, Page 18. Oh, what about distance learning? Distance oh, learning. The distance learning, I, I guess that's something you guys have approved, that correct? That distance learning will only be available, where did I put this? Distance learning uh, during COVID is no longer available by family preference. Is it available another way? Is it I think that there's an extreme emergency we had some you know what I mean? Something happened and yeah, there's something we can work on. But, yeah. Uh, page 18, personal electronic devices. So some red we're getting rid of. Basically, like I said, we're going to ask students to keep their cell phones in their locker. Um, teachers don't want them in the classroom at all. We, we brought up maybe having doing the pocket things we've done in the past. We're like, we don't want them. We want them to leave them in their locker. And that'll actually be the best way. They can grab their phone out of their locker as they're on their way to lunch, and then they'll have it during lunch. And now it's not a distraction, it's not an issue. Um, and then I put the consequences for having your phone, we've changed those. Last year they were really, I mean, very severe, really quick. And so kind of backed it off a little bit, but hopefully hopefully the kids will leave them in their locker and then it won't be an issue. Hopefully. Um, and I guess that's kind of the last one I highlighted. Proper attire. Proper attire, I guess that one's in there. We took out the line about if a student wears something that we find offensive, that we're going to take their clothes to the end of the year. And when we neither one of us thought that was a good idea. <laughs> I don't need any wardrobe additions. So. What about, oh, I saw you took out the semester test exemption. Correct. And then, what about the lunch, or you know, the unpaid balances, and is that we're not going to feed people if 
Like, that's how I said yesterday, anyway, is that we're not giving anyone lunch to <coughs> balance more than $10. Oh, yeah. So this year, lunch is all free. So it's not going to be an issue this year. Um, I know in the past they've done some different things. After 10 bucks, they, they got an alternative meal. I don't think there's any plans to do any of that this year. So all lunches will be free. Right, but I think it's in the handbook that if they have a lunch balance of negative $10 or more, we're not going to feed them. I don't agree with that. Okay. So let's see. Page is that? Yeah, it's at the front. Towards the front. It should say. It should say. We should put in there an alternative lunch. Right. It should. That, we're, we're always going to feed somebody. We're never going to turn somebody down. Yeah. Even, even after COVID, we'd never do that. We've never had. So. I, I agree. I don't think you'd actually we, do it, but I don't, don't want it to say. Right. That. Absolutely. No. So we should. Uh, it should be. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure that change gets made. So, so. just back to the semester test exemption. Just to make sure I understand this. We're taking that whole thing out, so everybody has to take semester tests. There's no. No exceptions. Well, it actually will be, there will be no, like we used to do a semester test schedule, and it would be an hour and a half long, and if you didn't have to be here, you didn't have to come to school that time. So what we're going to do is, there's no going to be no special schedule, and if, if a teacher wants to give a final test, a semester test, that will be on then. That we'll do it during our regular class time. So. There's still can do them and they can still exempt kids if they choose to. We're just not going to change the whole schedule like we have. Okay. Okay. I just yeah. wanted to make sure I understood yep. that. Thank yep. you. So is it possible for us to put this on the website to solicit feedback, especially if we have our own email address? I'd love feedback on it. Changes mm -hmm. with the proposed changes. And who do you want them to contact for feedback? All of them. Okay, I didn't know if you meant. Oh, I guess I would rather the board get the feedback since. Okay. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yep, that's perfectly good. I'm fine with that too. I would like so to then see Sean come here and talk to us. Their email addresses. It doesn't yeah. exactly work that way. If we're going to do a survey, would you want no. people just to list no, your emails and they email you directly? Yeah. yeah. If, so, they, if they have it, if they have want to say something about this, then they can email us directly. No surveys. <laughs> Yeah, no survey. Yeah, just put yeah. the changes. Yeah, that's where they email, get the information. Right. Yeah. It will be in the sheet. And you probably won't have your email until probably Monday with the state on their summer schedule. So. Don't have long, Sean. Well, technology that <laughs> doesn't like a long time. <laughs> I think with anything, they post it and it's available for public comment if they come here and tell us about it. So until then, until the guys' emails are up. If they want to make a comment, they should be coming here to tell us. Well, that will be okay because that will give Mr. Hoffarth or whoever is going to take care of this, put it together to even put on the website, right? Because we're just going to put the policy changes, correct? I, and, and ask them to be back. Or just post the uh, proposal, the, the, the whole thing. Oh, the whole than, thing, not just the... Well, I think because otherwise he's got to pull out those little pieces. I don't know. Do you have this electronically, though, I assume, right? Correct. That's how you printed it. Yes. Um, would it be easy or difficult, time-consuming, or simple to copy and paste what you want, the proposed changes, the old and the new? I think if it goes in color, it'd be really easy. You know, and I could just, I'll just highlight the title, I'll just put, you know, the highlighted titles are the ones that were proposed and changes for okay. Whatever is easy for you. And then we'll just put it up there. It's gonna be put it up and be the up. We're not worried about you, Sean. Good. Just but ready. I do have a question. As a teacher who now has one month till school, mm -hmm. I kind of like to know what we're going to do. And so I'm getting a little nervous about pushing back and pushing back and grab, asking you guys to give your stamp on it or however that is. Just, it, does, it does take two, two readings for the board. I understand it's correct. So it qualifies the first one. Okay. Hopefully we can finalize it for the next one. Do we have to have this approved before school starts? If we're doing the 21-22 handbook, I mean, just, <clears throat> I... Well, the only thing I can say there is we, we would like to print off the handbooks for the students right. and make sure that it's okay. accurate so we don't have one handbook out there and then another handbook. It might get confusing, but... And the index is kind of, it's all out of order right now. It's kind of whacked and so I'm hoping it, after we delete what we want to delete. I can go through and I'll adjust that. Well, it's a little know, easier to work with. Just from my perspective, I think we can make a decision now. We just want to put us up here to do things for them. 
And if, if they don't like it, then they can tell us and then we can address changes at that point. Well, a first reading can always be done and changes can always be made before the second reading as well. So if there's a time crunch, then um, easily we can pass the proposed changes. I guess I don't really feel comfortable enough passing proposed changes. I don't. I don't think I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really great idea. I think we're gonna end up in the same position. You know. What? We could have a special, special meeting, meeting where we only discuss this. Of course, we're running, in, we're running close, you know, short on time then, but. We'll see how next meeting goes. So we've got comments we get, then we'll go from there. Any other questions or concerns? Do you guys want to have a special meeting? Or do you want to? I think we should. Like like Dave said, if we don't, you know, we're gonna have, we don't want to have to be writing handbooks out there. And it would be nice to have this ready for him at the beginning of the school year to hand out to the students. So I think we might need to. I agree. Let's look at times. Well, the next board meeting is the 11th, so there's two weeks in, left in July. We wanted to do it then. I could be here basically on the 21st or the 4th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, that's awesome. Because yeah. I am out of state. So you're readily available is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, anytime, anytime you need to be here. Uh, what dates were those? 4th and the 10th? For I have the 21st, so oh. next Wednesday, and then I have the 4th, which is okay. two weeks from then. Uh, what did that policy say about uh, when our new board member could join? Is it any regular, or was it, it special? It didn't say regular, it okay. just said next meeting. Yeah. I mean, just as long as we have. And it doesn't have to be on Wednesday, does it? No. No. Okay, well that opens my schedule. I was going to say, that's ridiculous. We need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with the fourth if that works for others, but. I'll be at a conference in Bismarck, but if you don't need me here, it's okay. Sure, it's my kid's birthday. Can we try a 29th, anybody? I'm supposed to be in Fargo that day for a meeting. I will be out of town on the 21st. What about the 21st? He said he was available the 21st. I know that's like coming up soon, like next week maybe, but. Sean goes to get on the website for the 19th. That doesn't give me much time for Mm -hmm. that's oh, that's true. Good thinking, Twyla. Well, okay. No, just the email addresses won't be ready. We can put the information up. Yeah. Well, if, what other dates do you have available? So, yeah, no. yeah, I'm, yeah. Can we just use our personal emails for now, at least just for that? I if wouldn't you care. you want to, but do keep in mind that entirely leaves that account open for an open records request. That's another nice reason to have a K-12. Oh, they yeah, not now. Them. I'm sure you guys have been using them, so they're all open right now. But going forward, I'd like new members to get theirs right away, so that that doesn't become an issue with their own personal. Yeah, that's life. probably not a good idea then. That's why I use my minutes, Steve. Yeah, because once they get it, they will only type in step, and your name will pop up, and they'll shoot you an email to the first email address that they're programming their members. Okay. So would it be possible if the if the suggestions went to me, Mr. Hopwood or Mr. Gurdy? And then forward with them, or I'd be fine with that. Just to make it faster. Well, if you want it faster, then guys, I would recommend the survey. Normally, I wouldn't, but you give people a dedicated set of responses. You're willing to go from here to here, and if you list the whole handbook, you're going to get wow. I mean, you it's, just want the changes on there. Can a survey be as simple as just putting that out there? One or two apps should be on. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, we can make it as. Maybe we should do that then. Yep, that just then you get a nice little graph. You can see where people you don't have to tally anything. Can you send the results to the board members? Yeah. Or, okay. But we are talking about doing just uh, comments, or are you talking about each section be approved, disapproved, comments? Well, there's only no. like just five things that thing. had concern. I, I guess I feel like this: anything that you as a board member do not feel comfortable making a, a decision on. Those would be the items that be in the survey. Oh. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So, um, Ms. Munoz mentioned the one F versus two Fs, and I know there was a couple other comments. That's what we would put. Do you think a child should be eligible for sports with one F, two Fs, or zero Fs, or something like that? And there you'll get your answer without trying to lead them in a direction. That's pretty much the only one controversy, right? Or is there something else that we're. Well, I think there's another one. What was that on? Well, I think we were talking about the after school. I don't know if we really need 
Yeah. I just leave that to them. I mean, if that's the policy, we'll leave it to the administration to figure it out. I mean, that's, that's why we have them there. And the absence policy is sick time, like just being sick. Like it's, it has a list of excused absences, but like physically sick is not one of them. That would be just considered an absence, yeah. So it's not an excused absence? Not an excuse, it's just an absence, yeah. Well, see, now I, not yeah, now, yeah, now this is more to discuss because because now you're going to get somebody at, at number five and they're going to come with a cold that turns out to be COVID zebra variant or whatever. I want to give them the ability to stay home if they need to stay home. Well, and we want them to stay home if they're sick, right? Yeah. We do. And that doesn't necessarily go to the doctor every time mm -hmm. you're sick, you know? Right, right. So. I, I really think that I would appreciate comments, especially from teachers on things like where we change. I know that you already talked to the teachers. Well, some of them. Right, but the things like where you're requiring teachers to do extra things, like in disruptive classroom behavior, you know, I'd like to hear from the teachers. So I, I would like something from everyone. I don't really, I mean, if you want to put it out in a survey just as so it's easy for people to access, but I would rather have the ability to comment on everything okay. than just one thing. Do that. We did have the high school coverage, as Mrs. Hansen said, as Brad said. There was everybody there for high school. We were missing one person. Oh. And so everybody else between being in, in person and on the, was there. And so we had really good turnout. Oh. And as a person who used that last year, this is simplified and clarified and stuff. It's not a big change from last year. It's specifically directed and said, this is what it is, you know? It, it's just very clear on how the procedure and the process works now. Okay, I need to feel better. You can still survey it, but I mean, it, it yeah. was very much directed as far as understanding what it was about. Okay. Well, I guess I don't, I, I'm fine, honestly, with either way. The only, the only reason I could give to want feedback on any of the items that we um, are suggesting changing is just because somebody might not might think of something that we haven't already mm -hmm. or that we didn't think of so um, that's the only reason I guess I can see for wanting the whole thing out there but I am fine either way well do we have any motions Well, are we just going to wait and table it until we get info? Is that what you... Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I, I guess I feel a lot better hearing that they had every feature except for one, you know. Yeah. And so then I feel I feel a lot better about it, knowing that this came really from all the teachers represented. Um, so maybe we just want to leave it at that one. I, I guess I'm looking for either a motion to accept everything except that one, a motion to... Put a survey out there, a motion you to publish it. Except for the, the D policy, the yeah. policy. Well, yeah, I'll motion to approve it, uh, except for the uh, failure of eligibility policy uh, pending further discussion. Well, before I second that, again, just going back to the absence policy and the excused absences, what are we going to do about when children are sick and don't go to the doctor? That's still, we're going to just still be, it's an absence. Yeah, that's just a regular absence. And so, you get five, six a year? Six, six a semester. Oh, a semester. That's 12 a year. Yeah. 12 a year. So. And like I said, that's the guideline from that Choice Ready program that Grant got of six. That's, it, their, that's their number. That's not our number. But it doesn't define for us excused absences, does it? No, it doesn't define it. So no. that's what we're doing here. Okay. So in other words, to make it an excused absence, if your child is going to stay home because they're sick, you need to take them to the doctor. Correct. I think just by adding sick time to that, you could drop your regular absence down to one. I mean, just adding that one little thing. 
and we'd still be well within the night. Yeah, I think I think the parents are, are calling the school and notifying that you know the kid is sick or whatever. Um, I guess let me ask this, and I don't even know if do we have. I guess I don't have kids that really miss school unless they are sick or have appointments or whatever. But um, do we have habitual offenders like people that? are maybe questionable, is that? Yes. Okay. And we have, there are many days, there are 20 plus, 30 plus. And then so, they're sick? And so the students call in them in sick, or they call themselves in sick, or the parents call them in The parents sick. call in, and there have been times where we get, we've had a parent call in and say, hey, my, my kid is this today, and then the kid walks in school and they're like, oh no, I overslept. <laughs> so, it's just, I don't know, I mean, for the most part, it's not going to probably affect 95% of our students, but it's going to help us get that 5% in the building. That's what we're looking to do. And we want them here, we can't educate them at home. Right. So. I don't disagree with that. Okay, so I will second that. As it is? Um, with the exception, yeah. Of, of the owned building? Yes. Okay. John's? Um, is this without the absence policy? Yes. Oh, no, the eligibility. No, I mean, only the eligibility? Yes, that's what she said. Okay, no. Can I just add one thing? Is it on first reading? Are first. we approving it on first reading, correct, Daniel? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wald? Yes. So is it okay if we just send a survey out on just that one question of eligibility? Well, we haven't really approved a survey yet. So well, I'll make a motion. Or I mean, I'll look oh. for a motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make any motion. Yes. You can. Maybe I'll step away. I know I can, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm just asking. If I will make a motion to um, have a survey done regarding the activity eligibility change pre presented to us. Any seconds? I'll second, but can we have discussion? Absolutely. Yes. Um, th that's just the eligibility, and that is not the juniors and seniors who have a D or lower in classes. I'm just concerned about, like you said, kids that have jobs. Um, because th that is one of the benefits for them to make money starting at 2.30 instead of 3.30. So, if you, I mean, if you could amend your motion, or if you wanted to. I think there's a comment from If you want, you can do your thing off. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I just wanna, because I was part of the planning committee for reopening and stuff. COVID isn't gone, and so absenteeism, your one plan didn't correlate with your other plan regarding absenteeism and how that all worked. And then when he had COVID, basically they didn't send out letters. So, I mean, what does that look like if a pandemic or there was an extended closure? I would just hate to have to redo the handbooks again when you could put a, you know, if something comes up like that, then you have a policy already in place because I think that there just wasn't that connection. Thank you. See, when a family has to quarantine, I'm notified by the health department, so that's our documentation. So. Is there any more required quarantine? I thought those were all gone. I mean, there isn't right at the moment, but there could be in the <laughs> yeah. future, right? I mean, yeah, yeah in the right. future, yeah. but anytime that happened, I was notified, so that would be documentation right there. So. Okay, I, I really have never done this before, so I don't know how this works, but I am going to, um, I can't amend it because it's not my motion, but I will retract my second. So I, I have a question that I'm kind of with you, I don't really know what, because Daniel's motion approved everything except the eligibility, and now Jenny's concerned about the well, students, so I don't know. I just wanna, I just wanna, 
get feedback on that piece that Jenny brought up as well. That's why I'm retracting my second to that motion. I don't think there was a second. Was there a motion out of the survey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. there was. I definitely think you seconded. Yeah. You seconded, but she wanted discussion regarding the. So you can. So then all motion. you, yep, I can, um, all we need to do is you just can amend your motion. No, it's it Daniel. wasn't mine, it was Daniel's. Oh, I thought it was, I already voted on that. We're talking about just the survey now. Yeah. The survey right. was Stephanie's motion. motion. That's what we're oh, talking about. Oh, okay. Just the survey. Not his, not his. <coughs> I'll retract my second. But didn't we approve the policies? Yeah. Okay, yeah. but we can change that at the next meeting though, right? Yeah, we can still get input on that. Okay, yeah. all right. So I am going to um, amend my motion then to also add the attendance guidelines where it says juniors and seniors who have a D or lower in any class are required to work with an intervention teacher during their off hour. They will not be able to leave the school during non-class time. So you're adding that to your original motion? Yes, please. Of the you. Yes. Okay, survey. Okay. And Jenny, survey. you're okay with that? Jenny? Yes. Second. Okay. I'm sorry, can you just say it one more time? Her motion was to um, have a survey created for the activity eligibility change as well as the attendance guideline change. Got it. Awesome. Correct? Right. Yes. Okay. Are you ready to vote? I believe so. Any more discussion? It's supposed to actually say it three times. Any more discussion? Any more discussion? No. All right. Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. All right. Wow. Anything more, Mr. Uh, on the survey uh, for the juniors and seniors leaving early, do you want to check for the question of it should be a D, it should be an F, or this should not be here at all? want to do it that way or just the policy or no policy? That's a good question. Um, I guess I would like to see approve, don't approve, and then a place for a comment. Okay. What do you guys think? That sounds good, yep. I think so too, yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, um, we can move to unfinished business then. We have our tuition agreement, open enrollment policy, second reading. Let's see. Right, that's where we're at? Yes. And you sent that to us, right, Carla? Mm -hmm. I did. I have a copy of it here if somebody would like to see it. Yeah, can I see it again, please? Yeah. to approve the tuition waiver policy. Second reading. Second reading, sorry. I'll second it. Any discussion? Oh, any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? <laughs> John's? I think I would abstain again, and I'm sorry to talk so much, but it's just, I wasn't here for the first reading. Just to be safe, exactly. abstain. Yeah. Okay. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. Okay, then we can move to the budget. Before we do that, can we do these? Oh, yeah, let's do that. I haven't seen these yet. I haven't been able to check my email today. Do we know, um, right, so these are all under the ninth grade, so eighth grade and below. Are these 
people exhibiting hardships or are they necessitated by shorter distances? Oh, these are the old ones that we haven't. Okay. No, these are all new ones that are just gone up. Step two. Thank you. Thank you. So do we know if number 95 out that they're needing to go to my public schools for um, IEP considerations? Is that the reason why? Something they can't get here? Or we don't? They were on a tuition agreement previously. Before, yeah. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's start with the first one. Do I hear a motion on number 94 in? Yeah, I'll motion to uh, allow number 94 in. I'll second that. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. Do I have a motion on number 95 out? A motion to approve number 95 out. I'll second it. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wald? Yes. Okay, do I have a motion on number 96 out? Do, do we know what what school the mom works for? No, we do not. There would be no other reason, huh? They did just move into Surrey. Yeah. And mom had applied for a job here. Right. And was offered a position, but she had accepted one in Minot. Okay. But she was here in Surrey. But I don't know if the move thing applies to tuition agreements. It does for open enrollment, but I don't know about tuition agreements. It's not on the form, so I can't answer that question. I tried to call Jody Johnson today to ask, but she wasn't in. see anything that discusses shorter distances or hardship for the student and the student's family uh, pursuant to our waiver policies or open enrollment. So I'll move to deny number 96 out.
Are you ready for the vote? I think we're we ready for the vote. Unless there's any more discussion, I think probably have to say it two more times. Any more discussion? Okay. Any more discussion? Johns? No. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Walt? Yes. And then you can sign those and give them back to people when you're okay. ready. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are on to budget. King and Prime, you, you have the budget. As you can see, the expenditures will equal and balance with the revenue. Do you have any questions? I think you answered my questions earlier about where we changed. Mm -hmm. And that includes the, the money you had to shave off just now? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And the ESSER funds are, it looked like they were already included. Yeah, in some the of them. Yep, yeah, some of them. And then I just wanted to make sure, uh, I should have asked us earlier, Twyla, did you reconcile the tuition agreement? So that, the, uh, not tuition agreements, but tuition um, in the levy, so that we can we add it lower it. it. Yes. And but did we reconcile it to make sure we? Yes. I can shoot it to you tomorrow. I don't need you to. I just want to make sure it was reconciled. We did so look we at that. We did look at that. And okay. um, even though we haven't recouped all of the money that we could have, we did lower it considerably. Oh. Yeah, that went down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we lowered it considerably. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess because we had yeah. like 25 mils, I think. And yeah. it's already done now. I mean, I guess I would prefer we, us we to were be at, We were at 12. We were at 12 mils, then we went to 25, and then we went to 16. Next year we can stay at 16 just to recoup the rest. You know what I'm saying? So the, the taxpayers will get mm -hmm. uh, not as much taxes this year because it was, it was a good blow last mm -hmm. year. And we felt that instead of giving another hard blow, let's give them less this year, and then it'll be equal the year after. So it's a, a good transition. And I have not submitted it. I was waiting for it to be approved tonight. I didn't come Okay. Oh, okay. Submit the budget. It, it does have to be submitted to the county uh, by the 10th. Oh, of August. Uh -huh. Okay. This is just the preliminary, though. Is that correct? Or is this the final? Well, the, this is the final. Right? Yeah, or this is. is we're done. We're, unless you have any yeah. other questions. Unless somebody wants to see something that, you know, they want to change. But yeah, the, the final budget is due on the 10th of August. And then there has to be a public hearing. So that'll be scheduled as well in August. So this isn't the same as a city or county budget then where, I mean, the preliminary has to be in by August 10th and then they have the public hearing and then the final goes in. We can, um, we can submit it and then change. Right. Right. You can always go down and you can't go up. Correct. Okay. But there will be a final budget meeting before August 10th is what I'm asking. Say that again. August there will be a final budget meeting before October, sorry, October 10th? Right. Yes, if we have any changes. I just, I did a, just a little bit of research. Um, the miscellaneous levy, it looks like there's a 12 mil max on there. The, do you have just a number amount of what the taxable uh, or the mill value is this year? The value of one mill? Yes. I do because some of you always ask that. $10,868. Yep, that looks like you're probably sitting right at 12 mils then, I would say for that one. We are. Okay. I can tell you, yeah, we're at 12 mils for miscellaneous, uh, 71 for the general fund, and three mils for special reserve, and 20 for the building, which those are all at the max. Correct.
Okay, is there a motion to accept the budget? I'll make a motion to accept the budget. I'll second. Oh, any discussion? Waiting for any discussion? Any discussion? Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. Okay, in front of you, I have our SR3 narratives that um, we're going to be getting $430,268. And what we try to do is 20% um, of that amount will have to be towards learning loss. And we actually went 33%. We also tried to take some salaries to help out the budget with um, like busing, buses and uh, the loan. So I think that we have a pretty good plan right now. Um, with your approval, we will start working on the application to get it in to DPI as soon as possible because again, that's one of those things that they have to approve and some have been rejected already and sent back to school. So I, I don't want to wait. It's due August 17th, but I do not want to wait just in case it's kicked back. So um, with this, I know you had said that you, we could, you know, use this more in the general fund, but with that now $160,000 that we had to, or $156,000, whatever it was, mm -hmm. um, how, what part of the SR money is included in the budget? And are we really going to be able to have, like, are you, are you telling us as a board that we are going to have $142,000 to invest in other things? Yep. Um, at the end. Because we, for the SR2 as well, we took some salary to help out the budget. Um, I should look this now. But all the salaries that you see here is going to help us, and that's well over the, the $150,000 or $59,000. But what SR in, income was included in the budget? Um, $160,000. So $160,000 out of SR2 and 3? Yes. Combined. Yes. So we'll have, what did you say the total number was? 400? 400, well, this SR3 is 430,268. SR2 was roughly around 189,000. So you said 432? 430. 430 plus, mm -hmm. I don't know, is it 50 then? So we're going to have close to $470,000 that we'll be able to decide as a board how to invest. Well, no. no. Um, so, ESSER three, we have to decide four hundred thirty thousand dollars. However, twenty percent will have to be earmarked learning loss. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the other amount we're trying to free up to get the money um, back that's allowed under ESSER three, but will help our general fund so they can do whatever we need to. And you know, if it's help out the bank loan, if it's getting new buses or whatever. Right, I was looking for that amount. Oh. What amount is going to happen? Well, it would be, um, if you look at the SR3, any salary amount would be able to free up general fund money. But so, you already include some of it in the budget, so then it doesn't, you right, count twice. Right, um, so it'd be, I think I, I understand what you're saying. So, it'd be, if you give me a second, I'll give yeah. you your exact total. And is it, would you, Robert, <coughs> you have those numbers that he just repeated, the SR2 and SR3 numbers? I just didn't get them. 
621, and then you said he included how much in the budget? One, 160. 160. <laughs> I know. So 460. I have, right now I have 279,600. Okay, that's going to help the general fund. So subtract that 160,000. So that's roughly $110,000 oh. that we have. That we'll be able to yes, which would which would help that another bank loan is, um, payment as well. Right. That's only seventy thousand. And with the bank loan, last year we spent twelve thousand dollars on interest. Mm -hmm. This year will be ten. You know what I'm saying? So we're spending a lot of money on interest. So that's the plan is try to get that loan paid off, so we don't have to give away money. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. <coughs> yep, I just have a question. So yep. statistically statewide, there was a decrease in family engagement. And I know that ESSER funding was kind of recommended by state to be able to apply some. Did you guys put anything towards helping that communication and building the family engagement piece within the school? Yeah. Um, no, we have not. We, But we can, but we can use the general funds for that. Well, your title one or your general? A general. Okay. That's why we're we're freeing up our money so we can do a lot of other things that the board would like to do. And, and uh, we did that. like for behavioral health, we're getting new curriculum for the high school that the counselor's going to be implementing in the classroom. So we did do that. Good. Okay. So do I have any motions on the approval or denial of the SR3 proposal? A motion to approve it. I'll second it. Oh, any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Johns? Yes. Munoz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Wall? Yes. Okay. Uh, last thing on any business is a letter of concern. Uh, yes, and I, I believe this letter or this email was sent to everybody last night. Um, it's from a, I would say, very valuable staff member at the school. Um, and a, confidenti a confidentiality breach, basically. Um, I don't know exactly that the procedure or policy on, on looking into the situation, but I do think it is something that immediately would need to be addressed. Um, I'm just going by this email, it kind of sounds like the person could possibly be on the brink of resigning. I mean, I mean like I said, very valuable employee. So, I don't want to mention any names. I just want to learn the process, basically, of starting to um, fix this. Well, I think with a, a complaint, any complaint against the staff member, uh, administrator has to be signed by the person making it, and they have to make an allegation of violation of policy or law or anything like that. So, for us to institute any kind of investigation, I think we have to make that actual formal complaint first. Just sign and then we can take steps after that. So is it is there a grievance form for the school? Or is it like the only thing the century code requires is that it be written and signed by the person making it. Right. So um, but do we have a grievance form? Do you know? I think you're right. I think it has to be written and this is agreement. I don't think we have any specific form, it just needs to say what, what the allegation policy is. Or, uh, well I would say we have that. I would say we have that an electronic signature is widely accepted. Um, if we don't have an in absence of a formal form, I think an email with a signature on there. Yeah, unless the policy says otherwise, but I would agree with you. Um, okay, so let's just say we have an electronic signature, what do you, can you just teach me the process 
on what would happen next? I haven't been here for anything like that, so I don't know about beyond that. Um, I do know we talked about um, establishing a, 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 this is an investigative committee that would spend time looking into it, getting statements. And, um, I don't know if they make a decision where we come back here and discuss it in open forum and then the board would vote on what the findings were, I guess. I, I don't know exactly what the protocol is. So I'll be there. Certainly look up. I don't know what the policy, I don't know what the procedure is either. Um, it is, you know, for talking about it as a, I know that the policy for um, having a grievance at, you know, is that it has to follow the, the, the chain of command. And so a grievance against a teacher, for example, would have to go to a principal first before it could come to the board. Um, Cause I think we've dealt with that in the past, but this is, what's that? I said that's correct. That's correct. So I think that this is an allegation though where it is appropriate to come directly to the board and so I haven't dealt with that. Um, I would um, defer to Dave for any of Well, this is what I would suggest. If it is the business manager or myself, the board would have to do an investigation. Okay, if it is a teacher or hourly staff, I would do the investigation because that's who I'm in charge of. You're in charge of the business manager and myself. So that's what I would suggest. So if there's a complaint about one of us, I would definitely you know, start an investigation and, and tomorrow or whenever make an appointment and see what the both sides and then both we'll merit it is something that um, I can do, then you let me know and then I'll do the investigation. So I would be more than happy to volunteer to sit on that investigatory committee. Um, do we need two people? <coughs> three people? No, I think just one person can do it. I'd, I'd like to sit on as well and do investigations for more than two decades. Sure. I think that's appropriate. Um, and then we can have two. We can have two board members without creating yeah, a quorum. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know if we need a motion for that. I um, you, the president can appoint. Oh, okay. Well, and, and, and before you do that, I just want to say that, um, as Jenny stated, we all received this letter of concern or email, and I just want to say to the person, if they're listening, um, please don't resign. Mm -hmm. You are an asset to the school. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to appoint um, Daniel and Jenny to be on the investigative committee to investigate investigate the allegations. Um, and then you guys can report back to the board. Now, I, I kind of was skimming through the handbook when we were going through it, and I didn't see anything in there regarding anything like this. So obviously, there's another handbook of some sort. Okay. So if I could just get that as soon as possible. Send to me just so I can. It's not electronic. We've discussed that. It's not electronic. Oh, it's not electronic. Oh, it's not electronic. It's not electronic. Oh, it's not electronic. Oh, seriously. Okay. Well, where is it? Because I'll just email the parts that I need. Do you know where it's at? Should be in the portal. It's in the cupboard. At least the last time I saw it, it was in the Oh, boy. It's and dusty. And it's got like about this so you should get a copy of it. So, um, is it the board handbook? Oh, okay. So you should get a copy of it. I do have some big key. Jenny, that's not going to until you get a copy. You're going to want to have Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank at five o'clock. Do you have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Give me a second. I'll second. All third. <laughs>